work it, make it, do it, make sense. Thank you very much for inviting me in. And I have to say, this is the very first conference uh, I've been invited to, or I've been to, where the conference is brewing their own beer. So I'm, I'm blown away. So this is, this is great. This is a fantastic, fantastic start. I'm, 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 thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very, very much honored to, to, to be here. Uh, I'm going to tell you something about how we go on about constructing a, a quantum computer. Now, uh, before I actually do that, let me start by doing the most important thing, and that is to acknowledge uh, the work of, of my group at the University of Sussex, who, who are actually really doing all the work, and while I'm here at this lovely conference, they're actually in the laboratory uh, doing the work, and I should also acknowledge the uh, agencies who are funding our research and, and, and companies, so, so we're very lucky uh, to be able to do this work. Right, so quantum physics, what is quantum physics? So you probably haven't heard that much about quantum physics. So quantum physics is very strange, it's weird. Quantum physics means that you can be at two different places at the same time. Yes, you've heard right. So this is fantastic, very, very useful. So in, in quantum physics, an object can be at two different places at the same time. You can even move forward and backward simultaneously. So imagine you're sitting in your car and trying to get out of the car parking space, and you actually hit the car in front of you and the car behind you at the same time. So in quantum physics, that exactly can happen. And f very, very stra strange things happen in, in quantum physics. So you can tunnel through solid walls, and there's entanglement. And entanglement is, is famously referred to spooky action at a distance by, by Einstein. So what quantum computers are is, 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 is our machines where we try to tame these quantum effects. So, so quantum computing has nothing to do really with conventional computing. It's, it's an entirely new type of technology and the development of quantum computers will follow possibly a very similar trajectory as, as, as uh, conventional computers. So let, let me, let me, let me, let's start by asking what can quantum computers actually do? So it can, quantum computers can solve certain problems where even the fastest supercomputer in the world may take billions of years to calculate. Um, so it, it changes in, uh, the actual scaling how, how uh, how long it takes to solve a certain problem. So for example, the, 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 the scaling with the number of bits for, for a certain number you want to compute or, or, or things like that. And that's what makes uh, quantum computers so powerful because it actually changes the scaling how long an algorithm takes. So if you're interested in what quantum algorithms are available, so there's a, is a nice database on, on, the, on, the, on, on the web. So it's the NIST Quantum Algorithm Zoo. And so there's algorithms for search, factoring, optimizations, machine learning, and so on. In fact, there's hundreds of algorithms on there. Uh, but one thing which is very important, which I should mention, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this uh, uh, particularly in, in, in front of uh, uh, this audience, um, classical algorithms and quantum algorithms are not the same thing. You cannot use an algorithm which you run on a conventional computer or on a quantum computer. Right now, there's, I think, five people in the UK writing algorithms. And I'm looking around here, and, and all you guys are <coughs> unbelievably <coughs> doing awesome things in conventional computing. So, so if you're interested uh, in, to become more active in, in development of quantum algorithms, this is certainly something which will become very important. Another reason why quantum computers are so interesting is that they allow us to simulate other physical systems. Quantum physics is the underlying theory which governs everything. It governs why this chair is black. It governs uh, the, the conductivity of material. It, 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 it explains everything around us, explains the world around us. Conventional computers do a terrible job in simulating quantum physics because they're just not powerful enough, and so you have to do a lot of approximations. Quantum computers actually can simulate dynamics of these systems exa uh, uh, exactly, and that's why, why this is a very, very powerful thing. So let's start with some basic, basic quantum physics. So what is a quantum physical state? It's a, a quantum physical state describes an object, for example, me. So, so I'm going to call zero, me standing here on the left, and we're going to call one, me standing on the right. So that corresponds to a quantum physical state. And as I said before, in quantum physics, I can be at, at the left and the right at the same time. So an atom is on the left, or an atom is on the right. And, and these funny, funny little brackets around the zero and the one, that implies that it's a quantum state. So let's do an experiment with two coins. So, so if I were to hand out two, two um, 
uh, 10p coins. And so, so for example, I would give one to you, and one to you. I've been told not to interact too much with the audience, so I won't. Uh, I'm going to just describe this right now. Um, then if you had to throw this coin, you get random results, supposedly, if I give you a non-biased, non-dodgy non coin. And you'd also get uh, a random string of random results. If these two coins would be entangled, then both of you would get the same result every time you throw it. But individually, it would be an entirely random ser series of, of, of coin throws. So this is one way how to think of entanglement. So it, it's, it's a spooky action at a distance. Um, even for each coin is absolutely random. You can do any experiment you want to show that these are random. Uh, they will always deliver the same result. So how do we actually go about building a, qu a quantum computer? So first of all, let's start a classical bit is either 0 or 1. So if I have a memory stick, um, I, I program into that, memory, into that memory a sequence of zero, zeros and ones. The mad thing about quantum physics is now a quantum bit can actually be 0 and 1 at the same time. Now, what does that mean? So let's, let's start with a very bad memory stick with just two bits. I can choose to program uh, to write two, two bits of information onto that memory stick, so for example, 0, 1. If I have a quantum memory stick, I can in, and I have two quantum bits, I can write 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, all simultaneously in these two quantum bits. Now, that doesn't sound like much, so let's move over to 100 bits. If I have 100-bit memory, then I can write exactly one number, into my, into my um, uh, quantum memory. If I have a 100 quantum bit memory stick, I can write this number onto my memory stick. Now, I cannot uh, actually say that number, so if somebody <laughs> is better than me, uh, a very, very large number of, of, of numbers I can write into my quantum memory stick. So you can see immediately um, why quantum computers are very powerful because uh, quantum states have this ability to write 0 and 1 at the same time into your memory. In general, you can write 2 to the power of n combinations into your memory, where n is the number of bits. So how are we building one? So this is, this is exactly what our, our bits are. These are individual atoms, charged atoms. And each bright dot you see on the screen is exactly one quantum bit. And, and so we illuminate these atoms with a laser beam, and we image them using a very good imaging system, and this is exactly what you're going to see. So if you want to learn about physics, the best place to start, obviously, is Tom Clancy. So he did actually get it right here, so I'm going to read this for you. It's a little bit small. So in, in, in his famous physics book, Mirror Image, he explains quantum computing as so. You confine ions in webs of magnetic and electric fields, hit a trapped particle with a burst of laser light to send it into an excited energy state, then hit it again to ground it. That's your switch. Rows of ions and a quantum logical gate giving you the smallest, fastest computer on Earth. Neat, clean, and perfect. Now, Tom Clancy is absolutely right. Besides the last sentence, it is definitely not neat, clean. So, as you will see later, and when I'm going to show you some pictures. So, how do you actually trap ions? Um, so what you need is a minimum in an electric field, because remember, ions are charged particles, so electric fields, and minimum in an electric field will confine it. However, there's a problem, there's a, there's a stupid physics law which actually forbids us to have a minimum in an electric field. So now we're going to have to cheat the system. This is how we're going to cheat the system. So we have got this funny spinning potential. Right, so, so now if I were to place a ball into the center of this potential, who believes that ball would we would be stuck there. So hands up, let's do some democracy here. So who thinks if I put a ball in the, in the center, it will, it will be stuck there, it will be trapped? Who thinks if I put a ball in the center here, it will just roll off? Right, okay, I'm an experimental physicist, so we've made an experiment. So you can see if I, here, it just rolls off, if that thing doesn't spin. Now I'm going to turn it on. So now we've got a spinning mechanical potential. And here you go. So <clears throat> you can see that traps. Now let's, let's do 
another experiment now. We have had an old microwave. We slaughtered this, connected it to these two electrodes. Don't do this at home. You will die. This is a large voltage. <coughs> and you see, magically, you have these particles here moving in the center. So here you go. Even spinning electric fields can confine charged particles. And that is the very principle of how we hold individual atoms within the quantum computer. So, so these, 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 are, is a very, these are basic geometries in order to build a ion trap to hold individual atoms. So you have these electrodes. And I have on the left, you can see these are, these are surrounding the, the, the ions. And in order to make this more scalable, you can also just place them in one single plane. And the ions are trapped above this plane. And now this allows us to hold individual atoms, which are then forming these quantum bits. How does it actually look like? Here's a picture. This is a microchip. And so we produce microchips which have electrodes on top of the surface. And you can see here, this is an X-junction. So the, these little squares up there, these are electrodes. The ions are trapped above. And now using changing the voltages on these electrodes, you can move ions just like in a game of Pac-Man. This is the vacuum system uh, in, inside which this microchip sits in. The vacuum is not much better than out of space. So if you step out of a space shuttle, you have a lot more air to breathe than inside one of our vacuum systems. And here you can see how, how uh, in, in fact, our, our famous book author got it terribly wrong in terms of neat, clean, and perfect. Um, uh, this definitely isn't neat, clean, and perfect. So this is a small quantum computer at the University of Sussex. And so you can see here, there's a lot of optical elements, vacuum systems, all sorts of things that actually makes up a quantum computer. So what has been achieved so far worldwide now in the developing of quantum computers? Why haven't you got one on your desk yet? Um, so, so first of all, many ions have been entangled. Uh, the, the error within quantum gates is, has been reduced to a very, very small amount, to 0.1%, even less. People have done teleportation, so, so they actually teleported atoms from one place to another. So, so this is quite an amazing things have been done. But what is actually missing? What, what are we needing to do now in order to build a large-scale machine? And so this is the same as with conventional computers. And right now, unfortunately, we are kind of at a stage of individual vacuum tubes, eight, ten individual vacuum tubes. And this is kind of where we want to be. So this is one of the first com conventional computers. I think this is ENIAC. And so this is where we get on right now. And as you can see immediately, that we are very, very far away from building small quantum computers. We are not even dreaming about that yet. So this is uh, how a quantum computer would look like. You have some kind of place where you store these, uh, the, the, the ions which carry the information. So this is a memory region, a way where we can uh, 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 do quantum information with and a way to to, sorry, a processing region and a way to transfer information from the memory to the processor. This is, in fact, how a quantum algorithm would look like. So here you can see ions are being shuttled, like in a, as I said, in a Pac-Man game around, they're being, quantum gates are being carried out. And so this is a very, very simple quantum algorithm on an ion trap quantum computer, so a simulation of that. So we, we, we store the information in the spin, we call that a spin of the atom, and a spin is basically the electron orbit around the nucleus of, of, of the atom, and so different orbits correspond to different states, and these states are very resilient to, to, uh, to the environment. How, how do we actually now perform quantum gates? Um, traditionally, this has been done using laser beams, and um, so you interact uh, two ions with laser beams, but they have to be unbelievably well uh, uh, aligned. Now, if you think of millions of billions of quantum bits, you'd need millions or billions of laser beams in order to, care, in order to build a quantum computer. Now, you can see you're not going to anytime soon have a small quantum computer. Imagine billions of laser beams aligned in a machine. Think of the engineering. So what we have done is uh, recently at the University of Sussex, we invented a new way and it, this new way uses microwave radiation. And so instead of billions of laser beams, you can replace all of this with a single or just a few handful of microwave emitters. So this is the, the, this is the uh, uh, scheme, how this works. As uh, so you have ions on, on, on site this lattice, and the key part you have to know is that the, 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 the states within an atom they change, their separation changes as you change the magnetic field. 
And so what we do is we push using voltages the ions into the right magnetic field, and so only when they have a certain uh, separation of the two states can they then absorb microwave radiation which, go, comes from, uh, which is everywhere in the quantum computer. And so this means by the application, only by the application of a voltage, you can now uh, 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 execute a quantum gate, and this is absolutely um, possible on a large scale, and all we do now is to apply voltages to carry out a quantum gate. And so this now replaces all these laser beams. In fact, it's a very similar uh, fashion what happens in a classical transistor. How do we go about building a large-scale quantum computer? So we have recently, just uh, two months ago, published the first actual construction plan of how to do this, and I'm going to give you just a little flavor. This is how it has been proposed previously. Um, using optical interconnect. So you transfer the quantum state of an atom to an ion and link these using optical interconnect. But that is very hard because the entanglement, uh, the time it takes to transfer the quantum state, put it onto a photon, is very, very long. So we came up with a new way to do this. And this new way uses, instead of what photons, uses electric fields. And so we now transport ions from one module to another module using electric fields. And so you can see this here in this little picture where you can see two modules here, two quantum computing modules, and now you transport an ion from one to another. You obviously need many modules because for a large-scale quantum computer, you may need eventually millions or billions of bits. This is a, um, a module here, a quantum computing module. And so this is a little film um, where you can see how this then actually works. So you can see uh, an X-junction, and you can see an ion uh, being loaded uh, the ion is now being transported to another ion here using these magnetic fields and using global microwave fields, a quantum two-qubit or two-bit quantum gate is now carried out. So, so the two ions are now entangled, which is, which is it, what, what is required to perform a quantum gate. Now you transport them into another region and using a laser beam which goes across the whole architecture, uh, you can now detect what state the ion was in, so you get the result of your computation. So this allows us to now measure what, 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 is, what is the result. Now, all of this happens in parallel, so you have, it looks like a big game of Pac-Man, like where all these things happen in parallel with atoms being moved around and carrying out computations. And now, if you zoom out even further, eventually you get to the biggest size you can make a wafer. So, so this is now the module size, there's electronics at the bottom, and, and uh, cooling, you need a hell of a lot of cooling in order to make this machine work. And then you go from, from one module to another module, and you can add more and more modules. And now this allows you to create an arbitrary large quantum computer. And so if you want, want, if you want, want to now transport atoms from one module to another, you bring these modules close enough with each other, and now you can transport ions. If, if you align these modules well enough, electric fields connect and you can transport quantum information using electric fields from one module to another. And so this allows you then an arbitrary large size quantum computer. Right, <coughs> so, so where, what, uh, what do we now? It is possible to build a quantum computer using trapped ions. We have now all the technology available. It's still highly chal challenging. It comes at a significant cost. We are building a demonstrator device at the University of Sussex in the next two years. Beyond that, we're going to build a large-scale quantum computer which may actually fit a whole football pitch or certainly a building. So it's a big thing. Um, quantum computers certainly will transform society and, and you will see them eventually, but it's very hard to build them. And I'd like to end, and we do require more people to write algorithms. So, so another, another little advertisement here. Um, and so let me end my talk by just asking you, um, what could an unbelievably fast computer operating unlike any other technology we now do. Thank you very much.